Welcome back, my gardening friends, to another Focal Point Friday episode. These quickie episodes are either an important highlight from a previous episode or a quick focus on a current event in the food and agricultural world that I think that we should be talking about. Think of these episodes as a way to tickle your brain with one or two ideas to ponder while you're planning or planting or digging in the garden this weekend. Without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Enjoy! For this week's Focal Point Friday, I want to answer a question asked by a student in my Plan Like a Pro garden planning course last week. She wanted some clarification on what I mean when I'm talking about intercropping. Now, I try to remember when I'm explaining things on the podcast or in my courses or speaking engagements or even when I'm engaging with gardeners at the farmer's market what it was like to be hearing or reading about all this information for the very first time. I really do try to be as explicit in my descriptions as possible. So I absolutely appreciate questions like this when I've totally missed the mark. So if there is ever anything that I am trying to explain, and maybe it just doesn't come across very clearly, please, please, please reach out and ask me those questions, because I promise you, you are not the only one who has that question. And so the question on intercropping was, does that mean I plant another crop in between the rows of the others, or does it mean the second crop is spaced in the same row as the other crop? This is a really good question. So generally for me, intercropping usually means planting in the space between the rows. For instance, this student is planning to plant two rows of carrots between their beds of peas. And I think this is a great way to fit more things into the garden. Her planting directions say to plant two rows of peas, six inches apart, and then leave 24 inches before doing the next two rows. Her carrot instructions say 12 inches in between the rows of carrots. So she can plant two rows of carrots in that 24 inches between the beds of peas. Now I use the space between my pea beds for spinach. It works great as a ground cover for the soil and it doesn't compete with peas for the nutrients. In fact, it benefits. So long as you're taking into consideration the height differences for each plant, the nutritional requirements for each of them, and the pest pressure, then you can combine just about anything. And I do have that companion planting guide you can download as a quick reference too, and I will link to that in the show notes. So intercropping though can also be done in combination with succession planting. So like in the case that I always talk about where you're doing lettuce into tomatoes and then back into lettuce again. So you start out with the lettuces, and then you plant your tomato seedlings. While the seedlings are still young, the lettuce comes to maturity. By the time the tomatoes start to shade out the lettuce, the lettuce has already been harvested. And then as the season goes on, you go back into lettuce again in the fall. So the plants are being intercropped during the overlapping time period where they both share the bed in the spring and again in the fall. But intercropping can also mean planting within the same row. A lot of gardeners will mix their radish seeds in with their carrot seeds and plant them all in the same row. The radishes germinate more quickly than the carrots do. So it's a good way to see where your carrot row is while you wait sometimes as long as three weeks for those little diva carrots to germinate. And the radishes serve as spacers for the carrots. So there's less thinning required just from the get-go. Plus, the carrots are naturally sort of thinned as you harvest the radishes because they're ready way earlier than the carrots are. Now, this is how I used to do it. But now I use the space between my carrot rows for my radishes. So I get more radishes and I get more carrots. The radishes are out of the way before the carrots need more space, but I do have to go back and thin my carrots a bit more than when I was doing it the other way. You can do this with faster growing crops in other ways too. For instance, planting lettuces in the same row as cabbage, where the lettuces mature more quickly and vacates the bed before the cabbage needs the space. It's really whatever works best for you and your space and your plants and what your goals are. 
So hopefully that gives a little bit more clarity on what I mean when I talk about intercropping. Let me know if you have more questions on this. I will happily talk about it some more. Thanks for joining me on this Focal Point Friday. I'll be back again on Tuesday for another regular episode of the Just Grow Something podcast. So until next time, my gardening friends, keep on cultivating that dream garden and we'll talk again soon.